Uh, the hamburgers, the hot dogs, where are they? <laughs> are we on live? Yeah, I heard you on the radio earlier today, and you were telling the host that you were going to bring them hamburgers and hot dogs, and no, this is local right. radio, so right. I thought maybe you would treat us nicely. No, that was Bruce and Brady show, and yeah. just trying to keep the peace between those two. Okay, and, and that's quite easy. They do a great job. When it comes to uh, the combine, what, um, what are some things that are most significant to you? Uh, I think it's the opportunity that our coaches get involved with these players now. It's the first time we started our interviews uh, with some prospects last night. Um, getting an opportunity to do that, or the medical and the psychological testing, uh, the intelligence testing are all a huge part of this process to help us uh, gather enough information that to, uh, to make the best decisions possible. Uh, I'd like to look back at last year just a, a little bit. Um, in fact, last time I saw you come to think of it was the day of the Kirk, uh, Kirk Cousins announcement. Um, when you look back on the signing, do you, how do you evaluate the, the season he had, and, and did you get the quarterback that you thought you were getting when you spent, when you spent the money to, to get him? Uh, you know, I, I think just in general it was we, we didn't meet our expectations this season. And, but I also know that uh, with Zim, Coach Zimmer and the coaching staff he's put together um, that we're very excited about uh, turning the page and getting back on track. Um, when you look at Kirk Cousins, you know, a lot of times when you go through that, um, there's no question, I think, that, that Kirk Cousins definitely has the ability to be our franchise quarterback. But you have to, he's always so going to get the blame uh, because we ended up 8 7 and 1 this year. Uh, I think when we went out and with Kevin Stefanski and, and hiring a Gary Kubiak and putting him maybe in an offense that he's grown up with. Uh, through the Shanahan, through the um, Kubiak tree, and identifying the strengths on what he is really good at. And when you break down statistically, which we've sliced it, there are some things that he did really well this year. So uh, understanding and being with him for a year now, and Kevin Stefanski being with him for a year now, uh, understands, just like we do all our players, everybody has strengths and weaknesses, and hopefully uh, – evolving the offense that, that, that will uh, give him the best chance to be successful and uh, hone in on, on what he does best. Ben Lieber? You know, going back to, to Kirk and his season, we saw the stats, we saw the numbers, um, we saw many faces of Kirk as well, right? He, he was a guy that gave a lot of pregame speeches early on the season. We saw the dead arm dance, and that became a viral hit. Guys really seemed to, to really love him. And then at the end of the season, then we start to see a little bit more emotion, a little bit more fire. There was the, the sort of the outburst and the discussion with he and Adam Thielen on the sidelines. How do you see him and how do you think the players view him as, as a leader in that locker room? Well, I think he's definitely evolved as a leader since he's came in the building. And you see that fire and the passion that he does play with. And, you know, I know how badly he wants to win and how much time, effort, and energy he puts into it day in and day out. Um, but it's not... He's going to, get, like you said, get the blame on it, but it's not always just the quarterback. We had other things that we had to deal with, and I'm not ever going to make an excuse because of, you know, we dealt with some difficult situations this year, and I don't know if people realize the impact of, of Tony Sperano's death at the beginning of training camp. And maybe one of the most important position coaches on your, on your coaching staff, and give credit to Clancy Barone and, and Andrew Janoco who had to come in and take over in a very difficult situation. So, um, and then the injuries, but again, we're never going to make an excuse. You know, we didn't meet our expectations, but I also know with the energy in the building, um, with the way the meetings have gone over this past month as we prepare to get ready for the, 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 the new uh, league year to begin in a couple weeks from now, um, that we're very optimistic going into next year. You alluded to the offensive line. It's, I think it's safe to say that the offensive line underperformed last year. In your mind, do you feel that the offensive line as a, as a group or positions of the offensive line are among the top priorities for you this offseason? I, I, we've, we've really uh, dissected every position uh, and where we, we identified our, our, our strengths but also our weaknesses. And, you know, we have to look at the offensive line and, and how do we can improve there. I think uh, – Personnel-wise, we got to do a better job. I think it goes into a combination of actually what type of scheme you're going to run. 
I know defensively we've been pretty solid because we understand, okay, this is the physical traits at each position that we're looking for. Uh, when we go back to the offense, are we going to be a zone gap scheme? Are we going to be, uh, you know, a, a, a straight ahead power type team? We're we going to be outside zone. So a lot of our meetings were on, okay, what are the traits that we're looking for? I think the other things too is um, that, that coaches do a great job is, is even when you have to have replacements, like you know, when we lost Everson Griffin, Stephen Weatherly came in and did an outstanding job. When we lost Andrew Zendejo, Anthony Harris came in and did an outstanding job. But the coaches adjusted what they were doing, which is why we, under Coach Zimmer and the staff, um, to what those players' strengths are, that may have to tweak the scheme here and there. So you go back and you look at, and I know Coach Zimmer has talked about it a little bit, um, if we start running the ball more, if we start setting up things with play action, um, does that relieve some of the pressure when we had some of the injuries and some of the adversity we had to face uh, this year in that room? Hey, Rick, off the um, off the East-West game and um, the, the, the Senior Bowl, and now here we are at the Combine, how far down the road on the draft are you right now? Um, we're actually probably a little ahead of schedule. Um, you know, our scouts, um, our processes that we have in place never change, regardless if you're in the playoffs, not in the playoffs. Uh, as the coaching changes are go going on, uh, we stay a, on a very strict timeline on when everything needs. We're always going to have our draft initial draft meetings in December. We're always going to be at the All-Star Games. We we'll always know that we have our draft meetings and our UFA meeting, free agent meetings, uh, before we come down here, our cap planning meetings, uh, and we know the combine. Uh, so everything's set, the schedule's set in place. So uh, the biggest thing was with some of the new coaching uh, coaches on the offensive side of the ball, okay, let's identify those physical traits we're going to look for in the areas, uh, you know, from a position standpoint on how we're going to improve. Well, well, off that, I mean, each year not every position is loaded up at the draft. From an offensive line standpoint, do you like it this year, top to bottom? You know, what, what we do is um, we go ahead and grade our players. Then we went through our whole free agent process. We had the meetings. We had the meetings with the coaches. And we lay out every position. Uh, that we have a list on the potential cuts and trades that could potentially happen. And we have where we're at right now with our draft board. So as you lay that all out on a piece of paper, you can see where the strengths and weaknesses are. So I think, you know, everybody's been talking about it. One of the strongest positions that I've seen in a while here is that defensive line group. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but I also think that their, their, the other position is, is very strong this year is, is the offensive line. Uh, there's going to be a lot of guys as we go through the process that we may identify. The one thing that I think you have to realize is that your team is not built after two days in free agency. It is a continuous process. And if you're not active the first couple of days of free agency, okay, then we probably feel pretty strongly that we're going to fill that need at some point in the draft. Um, but it's, you know, it's exciting because a new league year kicks off, but you don't have to say, okay, within two days, we're going to have our roster set. It's a continuous process through this whole, all the way up through the draft. Minnesota Vikings general manager Rick Spielman at the 2019 Indianapolis Combine. Ben? Well, you mentioned a couple of times physicality. Now, that's that's a uh, a thought process and a, and a behavior, it sounds like. When Coach Zimmer had his postseason press conference, he mentioned that he wants the team to have a little bit more toughness, a little bit more attitude. And he said in, in all areas of the field, not just defense, but on offense as well. When, when he says something like that, does that in any way change your guys' evaluation process of like, like, okay, when we look at a free agent guy or a college guy, maybe we look for more finish, attitude, toughness over skill set. And maybe we just d bring this raw talent in that plays with some nasty and we can develop from, from within. Uh, that's always been one of our criteria. Um, the, you know, the, one of the biggest things is, is the intelligence because, as you know, Ben, you have to be smart to play in this league. Not a lot of guys that um, aren't intelligent uh, end up making mistakes and then the coaches don't trust them and they don't put them on the field regardless of how talented they are. But I also think it's a point of emphasis, and it has been, that we're finding tough, gritty guys because 
you have to love to play this game, no matter if you're making one dollar or one hundred million dollars, you have to love what you're doing. And if we can find guys that love to play football, um, then that is definitely one of the top criteria we're looking for. Uh, two of the famous Rick Spielman combine quotes coming together in one place here. <laughs> Number one, we'd love to keep all of our guys, but we can't. <laughs> Number two is how important the second contract is for your players. You like to have, you like to develop your players to the point that you want to pay them that second contract and then and be able to keep them. They're Viking guys that you know. The team is in a position where you've got good young players with contracts coming up, but right now only two teams have le at this moment today, the second. You've, there are only two teams with less salary cap room than the Vikings. Talk to me a little bit about the salary cap situation right now and maybe even some of the tough decisions that you're going to have to make over the next couple of months. Uh, well, Paul, we'd love to keep all of our <laughs> <laughs> young creative <Yeah. laughs> players. I think uh, the, the biggest, you know, as you plan this, you have to know that we've made some significant commitments to these young players and have been able to uh, get these players under contract. Uh, and you have to balance it is at some point, you know, when we're doing our cap planning and our roster planning, we're going to put out four different scenarios, okay? So if we keep player A at X amount, uh, we're probably going to lose player B or C. Is it worth keeping player A, or is our team better maybe letting pl player A go to keep player B and C? Um, you know, you look at potential trades out there. You look at potential, you know, do you go out there and spend big money on a free agent or do you try to keep your own? Um, so you look at all the different combinations and you have to come down here to the combine with probably four or five different scenarios at each position that we've been through. When we get back from the combine and talking to our players, agents, we'll have a better sense of where we're at. So we'll regroup and then truly you end up having a pretty good idea of who you're going to be able to keep and not keep once you get into that two-day negotiating window uh, before free agency begins. So right now we have and I laid out a game plan and meeting with the coaches and the scouts and, and Rob Brzezinski and our, we have four or five different plans right now in place with, I can't tell you the amount of scenarios that we have, but we'll kind of hone that in once we get back from here. Is Anthony Barr sort of the lead pin on all of this because He's a true unrestricted free agent. He's probably going to be very expensive, and you'd like to keep him. And so is, is he sort of, you know, guy A in what you just described because whether or not he goes would shift so many other things. Uh, th there's so many different scenarios. I mean, Sheldon Richardson was a very good player. Yeah. Uh, so we do mm -hmm. have some difficult decisions to make. Um, and that's probably the most challenging part of this job and sitting in this seat is listening to the coaches, um, putting – everybody through different scenarios on how our roster could potentially look. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've had seven or eight different looks on how our roster could look going forward into the 2019 season. So trying to come up with the best combination possible uh, to keep as many of the players as we can. Um, I have a couple of weird ones I'd like to get out of the way before you guys go hardcore on it. With Rick Spielman, general manager of the Minnesota Vikings from Indianapolis at the 2019 Combine. Uh, what, do, what does Chad Beebe's future with the team look like? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a Chad Beebe guy, and I liked how that whole thing developed last year. I keep not looking at you because that hair is just killing me right now. <laughs> that beard. I figured if I came looking like a mafioso, you would be you would fear me and give me all the answers. Chad Beebe. Yeah, no, Chad did a great job for us. And, you know, he's one of those guys that we were fortunate enough to find in our tryout camp wow. last year. And I think, um, again, that goes to show some of the, you know, just bringing in guys that have a, that are smart, that have a passion for the game, uh, that may have got overlooked. And then all of a sudden they come in and do something that catches your eye during our rookie mini camp. Um, and he was a tryout guy, just like four or five of our guys were that currently are playing on our roster right now. Uh, and then give them to the coaches and then let the coaches do what they do with them. And, you know, we, we, we think um, Chad has a chance to be a good player for us. What stimulates you more, uh, the free agency or the draft? Jeez. Uh, <laughs> what? I know you enjoy both, and you're addicted to trading, So I, I, but you can trade in free agency. Yeah, I, 
free agency is a uh, is a part of building your roster but i always believe that we're always going to go to the philosophy of of building through the draft yeah. developing our guys and those are the guys that you want to reward uh, my last weird one any idea who the kicker is going to be on the team next year <laughs> <laughs> well, it matters well well Turks didn't bring that up. I mean, you, you, you didn't <laughs> even bring up that. <laughs> no, uh, I like Bailey. Uh, getting in um, Marwan Muloff, our new special team coach, and uh, sitting there and listening to him and uh, his ideas and and how he's done things. And they found some uh, some great kickers. And and he's a guy with Ryan Fick and they're going to go out and you know, as the the, the, the saying goes, beat the bushes yeah. uh, to see what shakes out. And um, we looked at all the free agents. Uh, we looked at the guys that potentially will get cut. We, you know, Dan Bailey did a great job for us when he came in once he got uh, down with his rhythm. So, you know, that's another area that we have to definitely uh, look at. All right, a couple of quickies to close for the GM. Ben? Well, you, you bring up PA. You, you so eloquently brought up Chad Beebe. Um, and we – and you've and, – and, Rick, you talked about – there's a number of guys that have con gone through the, the Adam Thielen route where they just – they get the call of a wild. They come up. They they try out. It's called rookie mini camp. Okay, so okay. From a player standpoint, they call the wild. <laughs> the, and, 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 and they you know the guys, this the guys you know, quote unquote off nowadays. the streets <laughs> and and Very and they go out, they go out and make the team. You know, I don't have any numbers to back this up, right? I don't know if other teams have this high success rate of guys that come in for these tryouts, making the football team, and then making significant production and gains on the team and development. Do you get a sense that that word is around the league and around the agents that, hey, you're going to get a chance if you go to the Minnesota Vikings. They're going to give you a fair chance as a guy off the street to make a team. I, I think the part of it is, especially we've been so much more aggressive in college free agency. Um, and, and a lot of that has to do with um, from the ownership, giving us the resources on, okay, I, I've got the number on what the – league averages on what they spend in free agency five years ago which i didn't do a very good job of we were way below that uh the last two or three years we've been almost double what the league is spending on college free agency part of it is we want to continue to build our roster with this young talent just to give me an example um we had you know just drafted a first round corner we have a lot of depth at corner and we we're able to nab holton hill out of college free agency so I think the agents know that if they do come here, uh, even though we have a, a, a pretty talented roster, they're going to get an opportunity. And Coach Zimmer's motto has always been, once you get here, I don't care who you are, you're going to get a fair shake. And if you're the best player that are going to help us win ball games, you're going to get an opportunity to show that. Bobby? Time for two more. Charge. <laughs> Since Does he have to give the last two? <laughs> Can I go back to the Chad Beebe question? See? No, who else is going to ask you about Chad Beebe but your announcer? Uh, you have the luxury of having four starter caliber, starting caliber cornerbacks, maybe even four and a half starting caliber cornerbacks. In your mind, is that some – you've mentioned trades several times now. Is that some potential trade capital oh, for you to know. work with? Yeah, no, I'm not ever going to mention our business and what we're doing and not doing. Um, but, again uh, – Well, I'm not asking are you actively trying to shop those guys. Um, but those that's an it, it's a position of need on a lot of teams, and it's a real luxury to have that many good players. He's complimenting you. We're really deep at corner. <laughs> <laughs> we are. Can you use some of that as, as trade equity to maybe plug I, some I, holes somewhere else? You know, I think every team does that. So every team that has <laughs> maybe a surplus or players that are very good or, you know, teams will approach you on that, you know, whether it's corner or safety or linebacker or defensive line. Uh, are teams approaching you on, on this because you do I'm have so many starters? I'm not going to teams are approaching us on that. I'm just saying <laughs> uh, they could potentially, potentially do they that. They could do that. And they if could they fall. do that, then you potentially say, well, no, you know, one of the most important things in Coach Zimmer's defense is he wants rushers and cover guys. Yeah. And we've had, over the last couple of years, if you look too, we've had some injuries at that position. Mm -hmm. And we had some injuries last year at that position. So you have to weigh in all that. You build up all this depth, in a, especially in an area of importance for our defense. And if you start throwing guys or trading guys out, then how, how is that going to affect your football team and how is that going to affect, you know, the way we play defense? This sucks. You have to go and we have a million more questions. So just just quickly, um, 
Everson, Barr, Lindstrom, Reisner, um, Olendo Mare. Oh, Nick, um, Nick Easton. Uh, Nick Easton. Tell it, uh, Nick Easton's back, isn't he? Yeah, no, he, uh, you know, we just spoken with his doctors and he was going to get cleared to play. So, but he's coming up as a, as an unrestricted free agent. So, you know, we'll visit with all our players agents while we're down here and, and kind of get a sense of where the market is for everybody and try to make the best decisions we can going forward. With the visits with agents and everything that transpires outside of the drills, is this more of a job interview or Mardi Gras? It's a combination of everything. Uh, I've been going and we haven't even, I haven't even did anything personnel wise since 7.30 this morning on uh, a lot of other ancillary things going on here at the combine. Do you like that word? Yeah, very good. <laughs> Thank you. So it's, it's a great opportunity because this is where most of the business starts here at the Combine because agents, GMs, coaches, players, everything is, is down here in, in one setting. Okay, thank you. Thank you.